everybody, it's Mommy with Mommy Says for the Toy Insider. I know I've been absent for a little while. It was kind of a busy month in February getting ready for Toy Fair, but here I am, and I am actually in my dining room because I was just too lazy to go downstairs. So I want to give you my impressions from Toy Fair, and I was really, really excited about Toy Fair this year because I saw so many less, is that a phrase? I saw much fewer connected toys. Um, it was kind of a thing for a couple of years where everybody kept trying to connect a toy to an app. And I would see that and I would think so much engineering went into that, but that's not really how children play with toys. They play with a toy or they play with the app. They don't really do that toys to life thing as much as people think they do. Um, which is why I think like Disney Infinity didn't work like that should have worked right I mean that was a Disney game, but I think I think people wanted to play the game Or collect the figures, but they didn't want to do both um, And the figures kind of made it expensive to play the game because you had to keep buying them So I mean it works for Skylanders, but that's kind of the only game that I know of that it really works with I know Nintendo does amiibos, but I'm not sure that that goes really well anyway so I was really excited to see less things that ha needed an app so that you could play with them. The other thing that I found really exciting was more of an emphasis on um, encouraging kids to think while playing. So less less games that were about um, electronics or just goofiness. And I started to see more toys that once again involved kids doing something. Now, Sweet Willie, my husband, is over here in the kitchen. He's over here, he's trying to be quiet, well, because he just came home from the store. But um, one of his favorite games as a kid was Mousetrap. And that was one of my favorites as a kid. And we didn't even play the game, personally. My brothers and I, we just tried to build the mousetrap. So I came across two things at Toy Fair, and they're at sort of two levels of the spectrum of games like Mousetrap. And the first one is uh, from Spin Master, and these are on the shelves now. These are the Rube Goldberg construction sets. Now Rube Goldberg, first of all, is a phrase that I have used so much in my life it's, it's a verb for us, like when you kind of, you know, you, you put together a crazy hack to fix something or make it work, like in your house, like I Rube Goldberg it. And I used to work in a, a maintenance shop in a hospital. And when we didn't have a lot of money, it was a small community hospital, so when the guys would try to fix something and we didn't have the stuff to fix it, they'd come down and they go, well, it's working, but it was a real Rube Goldberg job. Rube Goldberg was actually a cartoonist, uh, but he was an engineer. And he used to make these amazing cartoons of these contraptions that would set off a chain of events and that would end in something funny. So in this case, this one is, um, we're, we have a whole bunch of things that we need to assemble that end with shooting, this uh, circus performer through this hoop. And these are actually sets for children. Uh, they have everything that you need in them in order to set up the chain reaction. So that is really, really cool. And I had a really great moment. I got to meet Rube Goldberg's granddaughter, Jennifer. And at first I was all like, oh my gosh, you're Rube Goldberg's granddaughter. And then I got to know Jennifer and she was amazing she's just a really cool lady we ended up talking for over an hour while we were supposed to be filming something but we just talked and talked and talked and she makes jewelry we were talking all about just like how new york used to be and like when her grandfather first moved to the city and just i don't know she was just a really cool person i had a really good time with her but these are a target exclusive and i Cannot recommend them enough for rainy days. Uh, we might still get a couple snow days. Get some for summer. They're at different levels. This one is sort of the highest level, hardest one. I also have one of the easiest ones downstairs and I'm gonna start at that level. So, um, but these are for ages uh, eight and up. And of course the buzzword is STEM, right? Everything is STEM or STEAM. 
So, and I learned something really interesting that ticked me off about why people are still referring to stuff as STEM and not STEAM. So what's the difference, Mommy? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Schools are leaving out arts still because the programs, the funding programs, are set up for STEM, not STEAM. If you put arts into your program, you will not get funding. Yet art and the arts are a huge part of creative thinking and brain building. Art and music. Music is actually a huge help towards learning mathematics. Guess what? There's a reason all the math geeks were in band in high school because they go together. Music and math go together, guys. So that ticked me off. I heard that from more than one person there while they, why they were referring to something as STEM and not STEAM and this whole thing, and I got really annoyed. Another thing I found, now this is a very small company and they were looking for distribution, but you can buy these online at their store. This is called Space Rail. Now this is, I would say, this is for ages 15 and up. So this is, is definitely for older kids and adults that really, I think like daddy could sit down with this and have a really good time. I keep thinking of my dad when I look at this box. I think my dad would have really loved this. This is a take on the uh, sort of putting a marble on kind of like a roller coaster and it's sort of Rube Goldberg-ish in that you need to assemble this in a way that the marble can go all along these tracks and end up coming out at the bottom without just sort of plopping off um, in the process. They come at in different levels and this is a level one. Look at that, that's level one. They become increasingly more complex and go up to a level four. Now again, these, were for, these are for teenagers and up and I think that it's a really cool collaborative opportunity. Um, sort of a twist on family game night could be family Rube Goldberg or space rail night um, uh, because it will encourage some real collaboration in families. Um, and it's, I was really, really fascinated. And what, what I loved about the folks from space rail is I talked to the mom who is behind this. This is a family company. I met the, the mom, dad, and the son. And I spoke to the mom and, oh, they, I'm sorry, they go up to level five. And I spoke to the mom at length. And the mom is an autistic person uh, with Asperger's, much like my daughter Gracie, who was really putting herself out there at Toy Fair, because at Toy Fair, you have to talk to people. You have to keep talking to strangers and you have to keep shaking hands and trying to make eye contact. And this was so outside her comfort zone, but she is so in love with this product that she invented and so wants to get it into schools and into the hands of teenagers that she was there. And my heart, I just, I fell in love with her. So um, really, if you have teenagers who are you know, inclined to puzzles and things, please check out Space Rail. If you are an adult who's into puzzles and models and things, get yourself some Space Rail. It's really, really, really cool. I'm gonna put links to both of these down below. So my favorite thing about Toy Fair guys was that there were more toys about doing things, making things, testing things, and less about, oh, it works with an app. Oh, it talks to you. And more about creative, imaginative, imaginative play, engineering play, and just play. I think we're just getting back to letting kids play again, and that really was huge. So I will have more from Toy Fair coming up, but uh, next week is G Says, and until then, thank you to the Toy Insider for giving me this little corner of your YouTube channel to uh, share my thoughts and ramblings every once in a while. And for all of you, make sure you are subscribed to the Toy Insider and also make sure you are always checking out thetoyinsider.com because they have the latest toy news and reviews. A great place if you're looking for gift ideas, head to thetoyinsider.com. Love you guys. Bye.